Just days away from the great American eclipse, and hundreds of thousands are expected to travel the cities all along what's known as the path of totality to see the big show. But there are concerns tonight that visibility in some of those spots may be less than ideal. And with that, Dave joins us with more on the chances of actually seeing the eclipse if you plan to travel to these places, Dave. Yeah, it varies depending on the forecast. Every hour it's fluctuating back and forth just a little bit. But take a look at some of these, and you'll notice the path of totality is pretty much stretching from Oregon all the way down to South Carolina. It looks like Idaho could have some issues. Parts of the central portion of the U.S. could have some issues. Down into Tennessee could have some issues. And even though it looks good over toward the coast, we've got stratus for San Francisco and all the way down to Los Angeles. And it may not burn off before the actual eclipse takes place. And when does it take place? Well, it starts just a little after 9 o'clock here locally. We're going to be probably in the mid-70s as we do this with fair skies, a good view of it, 83% coverage. And by the time we're done, we're going to be wrapping this thing up at around 1130, almost 1140 or so. So if you want to not just see the eclipse, but you maybe want to take a snapshot of this, can you do it? And how can you do it safely? Well, we have CBS 13 meteorologist Lisa Meadows. She's in West Sacramento getting those answers. Lisa? That's right, Dave. You know, we're all been told don't look at the sun, right? Well, what if you take your cell phone and you look up at the eclipse? Is it going to damage your eyes looking at the screen? Likely going to be the most photographed eclipse in history, but only if you have the right tools. The cell phone camera isn't going to pick up a good enough detail for you to actually see the eclipse. And the other thing is that it could actually damage your cell phone. Watching the eclipse on your cell phone screen may damage the phone. But will it also damage your eyes? A cell phone camera is just basically a digitized image of the, of the projection that's gone through the camera. So you're not going to burn yourself by looking at that image. If capturing the eclipse on your phone is a must, then there is an option, a mini telephoto lens. It's a little attachment that goes on the front of the, the cell phone camera, and it actually brings it about twice as close. But without a solar filter, it could cost you. The intensity of the sun could damage the sensor, and that um, would require a service or indoor replacement of the, the, either the camera or the cell phone. Looking through a screen may be safe, but looking through a viewfinder is a whole different story. If you were looking through a viewfinder in a camera, you are actually concentrating all of that light onto your macula and really create a burn in the back of your eye. A strong lens can instantly blind you, but even just a long stare can cause crescent-shaped damage. It can actually be in the shape of the ellipse of the sun, so it can see, it can just burn like that kind of a hole. To keep it super safe, just use eclipse glasses or a solar filter and know where to put them. If you're using your own eyes, you put the filter in front of your eyes. If you're using a camera, you put the filter in front of your camera. And also remember, if you're using those solar eclipse glasses to look down, put them on, look up at the sun, and then look down before you take them off, Dave. That's just the best way to do it safely. Yep, everyone be safe and watch a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Thanks so much, Lisa. Have yourself a good weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Hey, a reminder, CBS 13 will be broadcasting the eclipse Monday morning starting at 9 a.m. Then CBS News will pick it up right around 10 o'clock. And then shortly after that, total eclipse of the sun for most of the